ESP32 S2 Arduino support. It's here, almost. Okay, I'm running the Arduino Wi-Fi AP example on here. My Feather S2 has a blue LED on IO13, which is pretty common for the Adafruit boards. And as you can see here on my phone, I am browsing to that and I can click here to turn on the LED. And I can click here and turn the LED off. And this is running through just the regular Arduino code. The only change I made was I called the AP Feather S2 and I set a password of 0000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000. I also adjusted the LED number to number 13. And that's it. So that is the Arduino running on my Feather S2, which is awesome. So let's have a look now at how to set it up. Okay, just to show you again, here is the Arduino code. It's just the Wi-Fi example, but I've renamed it. LED 13, and there's my Feather S2, SSID, and all of my zeros for the password. You can actually tell it to ignore the password when you initialize the soft AP just by getting rid of the password like that. So that's all the code is. It's just turning the LED on and off based on the little server that it's displaying. And as you can see, if I go to my tools and boards, you can see down here that I have my Unexpected Maker Tiny Pico, Unexpected Maker Feather S2, and Unexpected Maker Pro S2 are already set up. I'm going to be putting a PR together to get these included straight out of the box when the S2 support gets released officially. If I go to the Feather S2, I've enabled all of the settings. You've got C CPU frequency, you've got flash frequency, flash mode, flash size. The Feather S2 and the Pro S2 comes with 16 megabytes of flash, so that's the default. And I'm currently using the large flash setup, so two megabytes for the app and then the rest for fat but you can of course choose what you want. And PS RAM is enabled. There is eight megabytes of PS RAM on both the Feather S2 and the Pro S2. So let's have a look at how to install this. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you've uninstalled the regular ESP32 support. The two of them can't live together. So you go to tools, boards, go to your board manager, go to ESP32. You can see here that I don't have the regular version installed. And if it is installed, there'll be a remove button. Just remove it. Okay, we're at the Arduino ESP32 GitHub repository. And if we scroll down, you'll see that there are installation instructions for Windows and Mac and a few different Linux distros. We're gonna follow the Mac instructions right now, but you just need to click on the operating system that you're using and follow the instructions there and it'll be exactly the same process. I'll highlight what steps you need to change, but everything else will be exactly the same. So I'll click on the instructions for Mac, and you can see here, this particular set of instructions is designed to be copied and pasted as one hit. That's what all the and ands are. I'm not gonna do that because I actually don't keep my Arduino sketches, libraries, and hardware definitions inside my documents folder. I actually keep them inside my Dropbox folder. I actually use Dropbox to sync all of that between the different Macs I've got in my workshop. So I have access to my sketches and libraries wherever I am. So I'm gonna be using a different file path for that. But you need to pick whatever the file path is where Arduino stores your sketches. Okay, whether that's the default location or whether it's a location that you changed. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that we've got all the folders we need. So in my Arduino folder, it's inside my Dropbox folder. I'm gonna scroll and I should have a hardware folder, I do. And inside that hardware folder, there's nothing here, All right? So what I want to do, I'll just go into my terminal. So if you do a PWD, you can now see that we're in the Arduino hardware folder. Now what I wanna do is create another folder in here called Espressive. We go inside that and now we're going to clone the repository. So we do that by copying and pasting this here. So it's going to do a git clone. This is the link to the repository, which I'll show you where to get that in a moment. And it's gonna go into a folder called ESP32. And let's see how fast the internet is today. Hmm, 
average. No, nope, getting slower. Okay, so while it's downloading, if we go back to the main page of the repository, you can grab the link just here. You click the little copy icon or just copy and paste it from the instructions. What you can also do is download the zip file of the repository and use that instead. The disadvantage of the zip file is that it can't be updated. Cloning the repository like this, it means that I've got an active link to the repository and I can do a git pull and get any updates that get added by Espressive, where if I did the download zip, I'd have to then re-download the zip and stomp what I've already got. Now, if you were wanting to contribute to the Arduino support for ESP32 or S2, then the ideal way of doing this would be to fork the repository first into your own GitHub account and then do a clone on your own fork. That way you can make changes to your heart's content and then if you want to contribute them back, you can do a PR or a pull request back to the main repository and get your changes added, which is something I'm going to be doing shortly for my board definitions, but I've got a different repository already set up for that. The repository I'm using right now is just to show you how to get it working with the Arduino IDE. So we've done our clone, everything's been downloaded. The next thing we want to do, if we go back to the instructions, is we want to go into the folder, ESP32, and we want to do a, a sub-module update. So this line here. And that's going to go and download any extra sub-modules that we don't already have. Okay, that's been done. Now, we don't want to go to the next step. What we want to do first is change what we have checked out. Currently we have master checked out, which is the main master branch, but instead we want to do a git checkout ESP32 S2. We're going to move to the ESP32 S2 branch and I'm going to, just in case, do another update, but there shouldn't be anything to update. Cool. Now what we can do is go into the tools folder and run this Python get. Now, you need to be careful what version of Python you're running. Python 2.7 has been depreciated. Uh, I've got Python 3.8 installed as my main Python version. Python version 3.8. So I can just type in Python, but if you have multiple versions of Python installed, if you have Python 2.7 or 2.x and 3.x, you want to do Python 3 on this command. Do Python get.py. It's going to go through now, and what it's doing is downloading the compilers and all the additional stuff it needs. And it's going to grab it for both platforms. So you can see here ESP32, ELF GCC, and the version number of the GCC, and then it's going to extract it and then hopefully download, here we go, ESP32 S2, two different versions of the GCC compiler, because obviously the ESP32 S2 is using a different core compared to what the current ESP32 is using. Okay, fantastic. Everything is downloaded and installed. That is all we need. If I go back here and look in the Espressive folder, ESP32 folder, you can see these are all of the files that got downloaded. If we look inside the boards.txt file and we scroll, you'll see that there is a board definition now for the ESP32 S2 amongst all the rest of the ESP32 boards. So before we continue, I am going to just copy in two files from my own repository, the boards file. I'm going to just copy that over the top. It's exactly the same, but it's got my tiny Pico, my Feather S2, and my Pro S2 board definitions already in there. I want to keep those intact. The other thing I'm going to put in here is an updated version of the platform.txt file. I'll put it in and then I'll show you why I'm putting it in. If you have one of the ESP32 development boards that are out there right now, the Sawala or the Kaluga boards, so long as they're running latest release silicon, then you don't need this change that I've done because they have separate serial UART chips on there that you flash them with. But if you want to use the internal USB inside the ESP32 S2 to flash the board, like I do on my Pro S2 and my Feather S2, you need to make a modification for now to the platform file. This has actually been addressed in a future update for both the IDF and for Arduino IDE, and so you won't have to do it. But for now, what we need to do is make a modification to the file 
where down the bottom of the file, underneath the uploading system for ESP tool, we have to add an extra argument, which is dash dash no dash stub. What that does is allows us to flash the chip directly using the inbuilt CDC in the ROM of the ESP32 S2. Okay, let's now have a look at the Arduino IDE again and see what we have. If you didn't have the Arduino IDE shut down while you're doing that, that's okay. Just shut it down now and then reopen it. And once you've done that, you should see in the tools menu under your boards, you'll have an ESP32 section and you'll have the ESP32 S2 dev module at the top. And in my case, I've got my Feather S2 and my Pro S2. And that's it. That's all you need to do to get the ESP32 S2 stuff set up under the Arduino IDE. Expressive uh, stating that most of the examples will work. I don't think there's a published list of which examples work and which ones don't. But so far, the Wi-Fi stuff I've been playing with seems to work okay. And a lot of the other examples are working fine. And generally, my ESP32 code that I've got for my Tiny Pico seems to be working great. If you are using a Soala board or Kaluga from Espressive, as I mentioned, they're using an external USB serial chip, which means you, there's nothing you need to do. You just plug your board in and you choose the dev board from here. So if you just plug the board in, here is the Soala, just like this then it should automatically appear as a port slab USB to UART because it's using a Scilabs chip. That's all you need to do, just like your regular ESP32, and you can click build and upload, and off it goes. Now, if you're using a board that uses the internal USB support inside the ESP32 S2, it's a little bit more difficult. I have my feather here. As you can see now to get the feather into program mode you need to hold down the download button and then press and let go of reset there is no auto reset system on the esp32 s2 one thing that espressive are going to be doing is inside the firmware once it's been flashed at least once they will have some code on there that can auto detect the usb being plugged in and simulate the auto reset system. So when USB is plugged in, it'll automatically pick the device up. But until then, or if it's a brand new chip that's never been flashed before, you need to put it into download mode. And now that I've done that, if I take a look at the board list, you will see under ports, there is a new one called CU USB modem 01. That is what the ESP32 S2 looks like when it's in download mode. So I would select that and then I could even use the dev module, that's fine. But I won't, in my case, I'll choose my Feather S2 and now I can just hit upload and it's gonna do a compile and then you'll see it upload. And there you go, that's done, flashed. And now all I have to do on the board is click the reset button and it is now running. One thing to note is that this Arduino support will only work with the latest revision release silicon. So if you were lucky enough to get a beta silicon board early on, either some of the modules or some of the development boards, then this will not work with it. It requires the latest silicon. There are some people that have got a workaround up and running that will work on the beta silicon and there are even some people that have got platform I.O. working. I'll put some links in the description covering those topics, but that's it. This will now work with any of the S2 boards going forward. The downside with this right now is because we did the checkout ESP32 S2, you can no longer build anything for a regular ESP32 using this setup. If you wanted to do that, then you'd have to go and Go to your terminal session and I have to go back out into the main folder and we're going to do a checkout master with git in the front would help. Okay, it's not going to let me do that in this case because I have uncommitted changes, but you'd have to go back to master and then restart your Arduino IDE and 
by being in master, you'll have the ESP32 support, not the ESP32 S2 support. So you need to switch between the two different branches for the different boards you want to support. Eventually, obviously, it'll all be rolled into one and you'll have ESP32 S2 and ESP32 regular support all in the same place in the Arduino IDE. So as exciting as all of this is, there's still quite a long way to go. There's still a lot of features for the S2 that aren't supported yet in the IDF and therefore aren't supported inside the Arduino IDE. But especially if we're working on it and more things are being added all the time and things are being improved. One of the main missing features right now is support for the internal USB. That's being worked on, but there's quite a lot still to do. If you're wanting to go bleeding edge, you want to have a play with some of the hardware you might have got your hands on, or you want to order a Suala or a Kaluga from one of the few places you can probably get them right now, seems to be a shortage around at the moment, grab a board, clone the repository, check out the branch, and start playing with the S2 inside the Arduino IDE. Okay, that's it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I've got new videos coming out. To my patrons, you're awesome, as usual. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.